Hi, I'm Trace. Thanks for watching this week in Discovery News. And whales are big fellas, or galas. What's the opposite of fellas? Whales are big creatures. They've got big bodies and big tails and big brains. We've learned a lot about whales lately, and we know that whales, in this case specifically a white whale, can mimic human voices, which is a little strange, but really cool to hear. So take a listen. <laughs> Weird, right? So here's the thing, it doesn't really sound like talking, but that's because whales don't really hear us in the way that we do. They're listening to the divers communicate with each other and occasionally popping up above the surface and listening to us that way. And have you ever tried to go underwater and then make sounds that sound like speech? I mean, I used to do that as a kid at the lake, but I mean, I, I didn't have a lot of friends, so you know, I had to entertain myself somehow. Right guys, right? <laughs> The researchers at the National Marine Mammal Foundation discovered this ability sort of by accident. See, there's a white whale there named Nock, who got so good at mimicking the sounds of humans in his environment that one day while he was doing that, a diver got out of the water thinking that someone had told him to do so. Nock has learned to speak human by spending lots of time with humans both above and below the surface. By hearing them like a parrot, he's learned to mimic those sounds. Normally, whale speech is very high-pitched, so to make the sounds that humans make, Nock had to lower his voice a couple of octaves and bury the things in his nasal cavities and also inflate a sack in his blowhole, which <laughs> sounds dirty. Discoverynews.com slash whale talk has even more information for you on this white whale named Nock. And since we're talking about communication, what about writing? The world's oldest undeciphered writing system is about to be cracked. Back in 3200 to 3000 BC, there was writing in the area of the world now known as Iran. Now, this writing was called Proto-Elamite, and the 5,000-year-old text has never been deciphered ever, well, except for maybe by the people who wrote it. And now, we're going to decipher it with your help plus this new cool device. That's right, the University of Oxford and Southampton are going to crowdsource this code project. Crowdsourcing means using the internet to ask everyone for help. So the new device I mentioned used lots of bright lights and a bunch of high-res cameras to take some really clear pictures of the tablet to be deciphered. It was so good that it found details on the tablet that were invisible to the naked eye. The researchers said it was kind of like trying to read without knowing the difference between an I and a T. So if you were eating IOL, why eat stad e mit be? Forget it. So that might be kind of hard, but the, another reason why this is such a tough nut to crack is because it was likely used for administrative and agricultural records, which means we are trying to read government speak, which is hard enough in English. Plus, there was no educational system at the time, so there are a lot of grammar mistakes on the tablet as well. This is a difficult puzzle, but the scientists who are on it are determined. The crowdsourced photos are going to go onto the UCLA website soon, so keep an eye out for more information. To learn more about the tablet and its deciphering, visit discoverynews.com slash ancientwriting. But if you'd rather look at some super high-res photos of something even more ancient, then check this out. This image is a 9 gigapixel photo of our galaxy, and if you can look closely, you can see that it's doing a duck face right there. You heard right, that's 9 gigapixels. This is one of the largest photos ever taken of our galaxy, and a gigapixel is a thousand megapixels, which is one billion pixels, and it's got nine of them. This image was taken by VISTA, the Visible and Infrared Survey Telescope for Astronomy. That's right, it's for astronomy. Using this image, astronomers have recorded 84 million stars in the heart of our galaxy. This also tells us there are 10 times more stars than we thought. So after last week when we found a planet at a neighbor star, and then this week there are 10 times more stars than we thought, what did we know about space before this week? The new huge picture probes the Milky Way's central bulge, <laughs> where a huge concentration of ancient stars live, like in most spiral galaxies, and this region is not easy to get a good look at. <laughs> Vista snapped thousands of infrared images of our galaxy and then combined them all together to make this one giant image. To put it in perspective, your HD television is 1920 pixels across and 1080 pixels up and down. 
This image is 108,200 pixels across and 81,500 pixels up and down. The D is definitely an H. To get a better look at the photos and more info on how they took this picture, visit discoverynews.com slash bigspacepic. So that's all. Thanks for watching this week in Discovery News. If you want more of our coverage, make sure that you like us on Facebook, you follow us on Twitter, and that you check out our Tumblr. You can also subscribe to our Discovery Daily Newsletter and get our headlines in your inbox every morning. Our social media links and subscription options are at discoverynews.com. Keep commenting and tweeting. I see them all. Have a great week. See you next time. <laughs> it's really dirty. <laughs> My Midwestern accent's coming out. It's a National Mail Foundation. It's a good spot. Hey guys, you want to get some water? Drop his voice a couple of octaves. And big heads. And I don't know what I'm supposed to say after that. And then very the pressure in his nasal tract. You know, I got it right the first time after right. all. National Marine Mammal. So, mmm.